Nobody wants people walking all over their property, especially if it's the police. And look, we all know that we can kick trespassers off of our property. That's why we put up no trespassing signs, and sometimes we have to call out the police to remove trespassers from our private property. But what can you do if the trespasser happens to be the police? What if a police officer shows up at your property asking you questions and they refuse to leave? In order to answer this question, we need to break this down based upon whether the officers are trying to come to your front door or whether they are just on your property line. Situation number one. What if a police officer is not trying to get into your home, but he is entering your private property? The areas around your home and within your private property are known as curtilage. Under the United States Constitution and the Supreme Court case of U.S. versus Dunn, the Supreme Court ruled that there is a reasonable expectation of privacy for not only the area inside of your home, but also the area immediately surrounding your home. As a result of this, if the police want to be able to access this area outside of your home, they must have either a valid search warrant or an arrest warrant. So why do we see cops walk right up to someone's door and knock on their front door? Well, like everything else under the law, there are exceptions to the rule that you have an expectation of privacy for the area surrounding your home. Exception number one, some people call this the plain view doctrine. What can the police see just by peering into your yard? Let's say they're on a public roadway and they look into your yard. Whatever they can see, it's fair game to use against you in order to enter onto your property. Now, it's a different story if you happen to have a 10-foot privacy fence that surrounds your front and backyard and the cops can't see through. Now there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. And now the police cannot just barge through that gate or barge through that fence without a valid search warrant. However, what if all you have is a chain link fence? In that situation, the police are not required to cover their eyes when they look into your yard. And now anything that they can see in plain view, they could use as a way to establish probable cause to continue their investigation. So the lesson learned here is that if you expect more privacy, Put up tall privacy fences, lock your gates, and make sure you put up a no trespassing sign so that you are legally establishing a clear expectation of privacy. If you put up a privacy fence and cops can't see in, now you won't have to worry about throwing cops off of your property because now they can't get on your property to begin with unless they decide to start using drone technology, thermal imaging, or GPS technology, which I'll cover on a different video. Exception number two. Providing public access. If you provide a path to your front door with maybe an open gate or maybe a walkway to your backyard, now the courts will rule you do not have an expectation of privacy because you've made a way available to the general public. The courts have seen this as kind of an invitation or what they call a license that you have provided to the public to be able to gain access to your front or back door. So as a result of this, courts have ruled that police do not need a warrant if you provide public access. So if you don't want cops making their way to your front door, don't provide general public access to your front door or your back door. In other words, make sure your gates are locked. Make sure that privacy fence is up. Make sure that no trespassing sign is in place. So now that there is a clear expectation, you haven't given a license or an invitation to anyone. Now, what if you are in your yard and the cop walks up to you? Here in this situation, you can refuse to identify yourself, you can politely ask the police officer to leave your property, and then you can exercise your right to remain silent. Does this really mean that you can demand that a police officer leave your property? Yes, it does. In fact, it is well within your constitutional rights for you to demand that the police officer leave your property and he must comply with your request when you tell him to do so. But in my professional opinion, as someone who has seen thousands of arrests, I would say you should play it cool as a cucumber when you tell that police officer he needs to leave your property. Why? Because police officers have a tendency to escalate the situation into a tense standoff whenever you raise your voice. They may now claim that your attitude and demeanor made them believe that you were making furtive movements and now they may choose to detain you for officer safety purposes in order to pat you down for weapons. Some people have asked me, yeah, but Jeff, couldn't you make them very angry if you asked the police officer to leave your property? 
I suppose so, but the police can't really do anything about it unless they want to go find a judge to sign off on a search warrant. Remember, in order to obtain that warrant, the police would have to present enough evidence to establish probable cause that there was an actual crime taking place on your property. Where would the police get this probable cause? Well, either from talking to you, which is why you should exercise your right to remain silent and not talk to them, or from anything they might see in plain view looking around in your yard for which you provided general public access. But what if the cops refuse to leave your property and they search your property anyway? Well, in this situation, you can obtain an attorney and you can file what's called a motion to suppress because that evidence would have been illegally obtained under the Fourth Amendment and anything and everything they tried to use against you would be thrown out in court. Exception number three, exigent circumstances. What if the police show up at your front door and now they refuse to leave because they claim they have exigent circumstances? U.S. versus McConney established that exigent circumstances are circumstances so urgent that police can now justify a search, an entry, or a seizure of evidence without a warrant. So how do you know if the situation is urgent enough for the cops to be able to bypass a warrant. McConney and other case law said that there must be probable cause that a crime is taking place on the property and there must be circumstances for which an objective, reasonable person would believe, quote, prompt action is necessary to prevent physical harm to officers or others, destruction of evidence or the escape of a suspect. So, if the cops chase a drug dealer into his home and they have reason to believe he's going to be flushing drugs down the toilet like Ray Liotta in Goodfellows, the police don't have to go get a warrant in order to enter the home. They can now enter the home based upon exigent circumstances. Another example would be if the police were in hot pursuit of a dangerous suspect that was last known to be in your backyard. In that situation, the police don't have to have a warrant to enter into your backyard. They can enter into your backyard based upon exigent circumstances in order to see if they can find the fleeing suspect. Exception number four, police are in your open fields. I know this sounds crazy, but courts have made a distinction on areas on your home's private property as to whether or not the area around your home is considered curtilage or an open field. Curtilage is the area immediately surrounding your home. Areas like your front porch, maybe your backyard, maybe where your barbecue grill is, your sitting area is, any area that is, quote, intimately associated with homeowner activity. Now, we already identified the U.S. Supreme Court case of United States versus Dunn that established this area of curtilage immediately surrounding your home is as protected under the Fourth Amendment as the inside of your home. But... What if you live on 100 acres and maybe 100 yards from your primary home, you have like a rundown shack. Maybe you've got some stuff stored in there. Maybe there's some weeds growing up around it. Do you have the same level of protection? Under the Supreme Court case of Oliver versus U.S., the Supreme Court held that even if you put up a no trespassing sign on that shed and you locked the shed, the courts had ruled that this is an area of an open field that you have no expectation of privacy. Now, what is an open field? The courts have ruled that areas that are removed from the curtilage are considered open fields. Now, that's not a whole lot of guidance, but as a general rule, the further away it is from your primary home, the less protection that you have. So as a result, the police could actually go over, start looking through that shed, and they could start digging through without your consent or a search warrant because the courts have ruled you have no reasonable expectation of privacy. Situation number two. What if cops walk right up to your front door and now they knock on the door and they want to either enter your home and search or they want to ask you questions? Speaking of demanding that cops leave, what can you do if a cop walks up to your door and performs what they call a knock and talk? Before you even walk up and think about answering the door, I want to remind you of something. There is literally absolutely nothing this police officer can do unless they either have a valid search warrant, which they're going to have to tell you if they do, or if they have exigent circumstances, which we talked about earlier, or if they have your consent which they would never have if you choose not to talk to them. But what if you do open the door and then you realize you've made a mistake and then you demand that the police must leave? Can you legally throw the police off your property? Yes, you can, but 
you must make it very clear that the police are no longer allowed to be on your property. Under case law, the police only have a license, what's called as a social license, to enter up to your front door and knock on the door. And just like anybody else that comes up to your front door, the moment you revoke that license and you make it clear to that police officer he is no longer welcome on your property, now that officer under the Fourth Amendment must leave your property. If the cops refuse to leave your property, they are technically committing trespass. So how exactly should you handle this? Number one, if you choose to talk to the cops, which I wouldn't, I would demand first to see a warrant. No warrant? In that situation, demand that the officers leave your property, make it clear that they no longer have a license to be on your property, and record the entire encounter. If they have a warrant, exercise your right to remain silent, step aside so that they can execute that warrant, and call your lawyer. What if cops do not have a warrant and they refuse to leave your property and keep talking to you? In that situation, retreat back to the safety of your home shut your door, record the fact that the police are refusing to leave, and do not talk to the police any further. Why? Because if you do, now the police could use that as a basis to claim that they believed you made some type of furtive movements, or they become concerned about their officer's safety, and use that as a basis to now further investigate you, and you could end up being in trouble. Number three, be polite and professional but always stand up for your rights. You mean I can't make a citizen's arrest and take that officer down and haul him in to the PD for what he's done to me? Not if you don't want the officer to throw you on the ground, cuff you, and have his backup help him take you to jail. If you feel that the police are violating your Fourth Amendment rights, retreat to the safety of your home, document everything through the recording, and then hire a civil lawyer to bring a civil damages claim against the police for violating your rights. You mean it's possible to sue the police if they violate your Fourth Amendment rights? Yes, under the federal court case of French versus Merrill, French was able to successfully bring a civil damages claim under a Section 1983 claim against police officers who violated his Fourth Amendment rights and the officers did not receive qualified immunity. If they continue to camp out around your property and snoop around the curtilage of your home, can you bring a lawsuit? Yes, you can. Can police trespass on your property? Absolutely. Can you demand that they leave? Yes. Can you retreat to the safety of your home if they refuse to leave? Yes, you can. If they violate your constitutional rights, is it possible there could be a civil claim? Yes, there could. Remember, it's critical to know your rights and stand up for those rights. But what if cops show up at your front door claiming they have a valid search warrant? What can you do? Check out this next video where I walk you through the exact steps you can take to fight a search warrant. See you over there.